Hello everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I want to present thing about the signal propagation and path loss from uh, wireless communication. Uh, okay, we will go to a uh, path loss itself. So, what is the definition of path loss? So, path loss is a ratio of received power to the transmitted power for a given propagation path and is a function of propagation distance. So, uh, what is the signal uh, propagation characteristic? So, the path loss itself is the power fall off relative to distance and for shadowing it means that the random fluctuation uh, due to uh, the obstruction like a building and etc and the next is flat and frequency selective fading this is caused by the multipath okay so we going to the next uh, section about the transmitted and received signal here uh, it is divided by three sections the first is transmitted signal which we have here the function of st is equal to re in bracket ut e port by g in bracket 2 p v c t is equal to s i t cos 2 p f c t minus s q t sin 2 p v c t where v c is the carrier frequency and the u t is the equivalent low pass signal of s t with bandwidth b u and power b u and also for inverse component is defined by SIT is equal to REUT and quadrature component SQT is equal to IMUT. The phase of UT includes any career phase offset. And then the next we have received signal which is uh, defined by the function RT is equal to R E V T E port by G in bracket 2 P V C T V T is equal to U T dot C T for C T is the equivalent equivalent low pass channel impulse response for H D and the next is Doppler frequency shift which uh, this is defined as f uh, d uh, that was uh, equal to v per lambda cos t this may also be introduced in the received signal we will ignore for now as it has little impact on path loss but it has big impact on fading Okay, next section, uh, we have free space path loss model. This is uh, typically uh, used for uh, unobstructed loss signal path. We know that the received signal is uh, R this RT function, and the equation is like this, and the received uh, uh, power, signal power, is like this. PR equal to this. So uh, power fall uh, falls of proportional to uh, one per d uh, port by two, and lambda port by two is uh, equal to one per FC port by two. This dependence on the inverse of the square of the carrier frequency is due to the effective aperture of the receiver and also power falls off proportional to the uh, to net antenna gain 
uh, which is uh, GT and GR. Uh, this combines the transmit and receive antenna gain GT and GR respectively. This model not accurate for general environment. Okay, we go to the next section. We have two ray model. So here one LOS path, one reflected path, or or also uh, called by one reflected path, and then at small distance power falls off proportional to the D port by two or uh, free space loss on both paths. Above some uh, critical distance DC received power gi power given by this equation. And then, uh, okay, so here, uh, where G approximates, uh, when G approximates the combin combined transmit and receiver gains of both multipath components. So here is, uh, we know that the G is the approximation. So we're going to the next, uh, above the, uh, above DC power falls of proportional to D port by 4 and is uh, independent of the signal wavelength or we call it as frequency then the next uh, point is this model not generally accurate for cities or indoors we can see here for the uh, configuration and also the graph for the output can see here this is the TA in polarization and then we can see how uh, effective uh, is for this model and then we go to the uh, generalized ray tracing it is represent with fronts as simple particles which means that uh, it is geometry versus Maxwell differential equations it can incorpor incorporate all signal components including reflection scattering and also diffraction reflected rays have power fall off proportional to d port by 2 by free space path loss model scattered and refracted rays have power fall off that depends on exact distance of scattering of or refractive object from transmitter and receiver and then if object are more than a few wavelength from receiver typically uh, neglect scattering and refraction most computer packets for channel simulation in indoor or also outdoor environments use general ray tracing for path loss but uh, this model requires detailed uh, uh, site information so we can see here this the uh, figure of the generalized tracing okay we go into the next we have single slope path loss exponent model we have here the figure of the uh, between the um, uh, the between distance and path loss uh, power, we can see the plot of the diagram. Uh, here's the parameter of each color. So we have, uh, in uh, for example, we have uh, purple here. So it means that the beta is equal to one per three, and for the alpha is equal to three. And we can see here uh, this is exponential going to the down from zero to the mm, from zero to one thousand here like this. But if we look into the uh, blue one, which uh, it has um, bigger beta. Uh, it has smaller uh, alpha so the graph will be reflectively 
reflect ref, uh, reflectively with the purple one. So we can uh, conclude that capture main characteristic of ray tracing using single slope path loss exponential model uh, PR equal to PTK H uh, PTK <coughs> I mean yeah, mm, PT, PTK DR per D uh, port by gamma where K is in is a constant factor it is a f uh, constant factor PR uh, DR per PT uh, where DR is a reference distance and the gamma is the path loss exponent so the path loss exponent is a function of carrier frequency environment abstraction environment abstraction etc typically ranges from 2 to 8 it is uh, around 1 gigahertz model captures main characteristic of tree tracing good for high level analysis then we have millimeter wave propagation model so it is the uh, it consists of carrier frequency in the six between 60 and 100 gigahertz range all commercial system today fit in a fraction of this band and it is uh, lightly or not regulated millimeter wave propagation models are still maturing there are extensive measurement but few analytical models path loss proportional to lambda per by 2 very high at this frequency can be compensated by massive uh, MIMO and then for the addition we have uh, measurement uh, indicate heavy oxygen absorption from the atmosphere and heavy attenuation at 60 gigahertz and also at 120 gigahertz and also 180 gigahertz it is this is because to because of uh, the chemical structure of oxygen measurement also indicate that attenuation due to shadowing from objects more severe at these frequencies and the shadowing can also cause scattering of direct directed directed beams then bottom line mm wave communication will either be short range or require large antenna arrays to get larger range leading to the dynamic duo of mm wave massive MIMO then we're going to the next we have measurement based propagation model so we have this uh, figure this is the example comparison between measurement and propagation models for an outer pedestrian route this is only example the, mm, mm, the connection between the path loss and the measurement points and this is we have the uh, this uh, variable we have measurement uh, TBE and SA and also we have this urban and suburban and also SUI urban okay so irregular terrain uh, like cities or buildings doesn't lend itself to simple analytical path loss model then the measurement best path loss model are based on extensive measurement and then a number of measurement based path loss model have been de developed over the years and these models are generally based on large empirical measurement campaigns that can range over a variety of distances, frequency ranges, geographical regions for outdoor models, and building types for indoor models. The course reader describes the most common analytical path loss model based on empirical measurements for both indoor and outdoor systems. 
Okay, so we are we will talking about the standard best model for Wi-Fi. You know that Wi-Fi is using the one uh, I mean eight hundred two point eleven and also the cellular three GPP. Okay, so the standard bodies for cellular also called by three GPP and the Wi-Fi. The most uh, mostly of the Wi-Fi we have. This uh, serial uh, code uh, one uh, eight hundred two point eleven have developed classes of propagation models like inner other high speed outer low speed which are used to evalu evaluate different technology proposals to the standard simulation packages often integrate this model into their software for ease of simulation. The reader describes uh, cellular 3GPP and 5G channel models as well as Wi-Fi 802.11n and also as uh, SE models. New models for future cellular and Wi-Fi system are under development. Okay, we then we go to the last section of this presentation conclusion okay so we have uh, we have the uh, main points that the path loss model simplify Maxwell equation the model for re in complexity and also accuracy powerful of uh, with distance is proportional to d part by 2 in free space model d part by 4 in two path model General ray tracing requires detailed uh, site-specific information, typically generated with computer package. Main characteristic of ray tracing models captured in simplified path loss model. Millimeter wave, a promising frequency band. Propagation not well understood and likely needs massive MIMO for reasonable range. Empirical models widely used to study cellular and Wi-Fi performance via simulation. The 802.11 Wi-Fi and 3GPP cellular models are not very accurate and aren't easy to analyze, mainly used for comparison of the standard proposals. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.